Let's go to Brandon in Phoenix. What's up, Brandon? Hi, John. How are you? Remarkable. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for taking my call. You got it, man. What's up? Uh, so, kind of a, a weird situation. Um, my wife and I recently moved uh, here to Phoenix a few months ago. I started a brand new job. Um, totally new city, new state, all of that. Um, and over the past uh, month, month and a half or so, uh, I've developed a, a really big crush on a coworker, and I feel like oh, I'm, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm back in high school, and it's uh, <laughs> it's it's a very weird feeling. Uh, I've been happily married for almost four years, and uh, my marriage is great. And I don't know why all of a sudden this has come up, but it has, and I'm not sure how to navigate that. Hmm. Okay, so are you ready just to buckle up? Because I got a lot of thoughts. Okay. Here's your job. Your job is to interrupt me at any point, okay? Okay. Is that cool? That's so cool. I'm going to rock and roll. You tell me you're wrong. Hold on and just yell, throw a flag, or if you have like one of those shut up buttons, just push it, okay? So Sounds good. Four years in, y'all have started to settle in. And then you took a new job. You all moved to a new town. It was exciting and scary. And you all had to leave friends or family or whatever. And you landed here. Okay. And your wife is probably settled into, you're developing a routine. You're starting to talk about what house one day and maybe having kids or not going to have kids and all that stuff. And you're slowly, slowly, tiny, slowly feeling the old adventurous, yeah, dude, Brandon, slowly starting to suffocate a little bit. And the humanity of your wife is real. She's got boogers and she farts and she's like, doesn't wear makeup all the time, like all that stuff. And then you start this new job in this new town and somebody makes your heart start beating a little faster again. And maybe her body's a little bit better than your wife's or a little bit different. I don't say better than, but it's more your jam or maybe there's something in the way she touches your arm or she laughs or she listens to the same music as you. There's a little thing that slowly makes you feel like, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this guy, the way he used to feel around girls like her. And you even said it, uh, you feel like a high schooler again. You know, it was in high school for some yeah. of us like me. I loved it. I love the awkwardness. <laughs> I love wondering if she liked me. I wondered, I loved when she broke up with me. I mean, I hated it at the time, but in retrospect, I loved, my wife hated it. I loved it, dude. And so let me make this super clear to you, okay? This is not hey. about her. Nothing to do with her. This is about you. And yeah. I want to I free you from something. Being attracted to people, thinking people are awesome, wondering what if. I would even go as far as to say as having like a crush on someone. Like I just like spending time with it. That's the rest of your life, dude. And I, I'm not, I, I think anybody who beats you up over that is an idiot, okay? Um, okay. But yeah, let me say this, but you're always going to find people that are sexy or beautiful, hilarious, fun. I, I had one friend tell me um, he ended up leaving his wife, right? So and we'll get to that in a second. But he said something, I just like the way she moves. And there was a sensuality to way this, this person he worked with, the way she just moved through the world, right? It wasn't even this particular, I'm overwhelmed by how beautiful she is or whatever, whatever. So whatever that is, you land on two choices, okay? You ready? Choice ready. number one, I am going to scratch and fight and claw my way back to feeling alive inside the marriage that I committed my life to. And we'll talk about that in a second, how you do that. But we're going to create a world where I feel alive, where I'm daily leaning into my wife, where I tell her the truth, where I tell her what I would love to try in the bedroom, what I would like to stop doing, like when it comes to holiday plans, all that stuff. I'm going to start telling her the truth because I haven't really been. I've been hoping she was a mind reader and kind of leaning in a little bit and hoping she would pretend and kind of trying to position her this way. But I haven't said anything because I'm kind of dishonest and kind of a coward a little bit. And I'm going to allow her to say the same thing too. I'm going to respect her boundaries. So I'm going to stop there before I get to number two. Am I off by in, on any of this? 
No, uh, actually, <laughs> just kind of describing the situation, you, you you pretty much nailed it on the head. And 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 I I want to clarify, yeah, like I'm I'm in a great marriage. I I love my wife, uh, but yeah, I, I think I don't know, just something about starting in this new place, and uh, and I, and I don't even have that that close of a relationship with this coworker. It, it's literally just being friends at work, but, uh, yeah, she, she's, this coworker definitely has me feeling some of those things. So okay, I think, I think you're right on. So that leads me to number two. Okay. You're going to respect the fact that you stood up in front of your friends and your family. And if you're a person of faith in front of God and you stood before her, your wife, and you said, come what comes, I will be right here yeah what that means is when you have crushes and want to hang out more and want to have a little side text conversation with somebody i have been there across the board on all of those things dude and i've accidentally through private jokes and thinking this is funny found myself staring over an abyss with no intention see what i'm saying yeah. Thank God I've never done anything irreversible, but I'm telling you, it's just so innocuous. And my whole life was about flirty energy. That's how I entered a room. And I'm telling you right now, it's it's been an off switch. Now I enter a room with peace and I don't want anything from any of the people because what I realized I was using people to make myself feel better. Okay. So the earlier you can say, yeah, she's beautiful. That's, that, that's, she's hilarious and I'd like to there it is that's when you got a choice I don't text mm-hmm. I just don't I don't text women I'm not married to I don't go get drinks with fill in the blank anymore I don't do this anymore I make sure I sit over here because I told my wife right. and it's gonna feel like um I mean, gosh, now you're going to get me all soapboxed out. We just live in a culture that says like your feelings are the most important thing. And I reject that with all of my heart. Because you have the same yeah. feelings that point out how much, how pretty she is and how funny she is or whatever that you're finding attractive about her. Those same feelings pointed you towards your wife. Like feelings are feelings. And then you made a choice, right? And so action, I think, is really critical here. Um, okay. <sighs> What are you going to do? Well, I, I, I have been meaning to really talk about it with my wife. Uh, I, I'm a little nervous as to how she'll react. Why, wh- uh, what would that bring you? Um, well, I mean, I, I think for me it would bring me peace. But, yeah, I'm, I am a little anxious as to what she'll, have you done what any, she'll think. Have so. you done anything wrong? No. What is, man, now I'm going to get myself in some dangerous territory. What I have found with younger millennials is, uh, and this, it's a real, and I say that not in a disparaging way. I just don't see it in other, other generational groups is a need to over, overshare an almost weaponized transparency. What I mean by mm-hmm. that is, um, I tell people all the time, you can't keep secrets like you got to be honest with your spouse. You got to tell them what you're, what's going on. You got to tell them like all, all that's good. And I'm finding people who are 22, 23, 25, 26 walking down the mall and looking over at their husband and being like, man, I'd like to sleep with that guy. And it's like, that's super not helpful, right? There's a point when it's, it, so that's what I'm asking you. What, what about this situation? You're at a new job in a new town in a new place. Maybe you didn't want to take this new job. Maybe this is mostly the house that your wife picked. Maybe you're starting to settle in and say, oh my gosh, this is the rest of my life and I don't like who I'm becoming. And then I see her. What makes you say, I need to go tell my wife that I found somebody else attractive? Well, I uh, I don't know. I, I think it's just wanting to be transparent with my wife. Uh, you know, I've always been. And... Um, I, yeah, I guess I'm just afraid of maybe, you know, triggering some anxiety, some jealousy in, in her. Um, Will you ever cheat on your wife? In our marriage. 
Sorry? Will you ever cheat on your wife? No. Okay. If I was you, I would probably I would consider a couple of things. One, yes, if I mean you know your marriage better than me. If you if sitting down saying, I need you to know that I have the feelings for somebody at work. And I don't even hear you saying you have feelings for somebody. I have you, I feel like you're telling, or I hear you telling me, I'm kind of caught off guard because I've kind of got a crush on somebody, which is different than I, I really am trying to figure out ways to spend more time with somebody. I really want somebody else. Does that make sense? And it sounds like I'm being, I'm dancing a fine line here, but if, tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, l- let me give you this picture. Esther Perel paints, and I love it. You spend all of your dating time practicing safety. Is she going to show up? Right. Is he going to answer the phone? If somebody tries to like get me in a bar, is he going to stand up for me? Like we're practicing safety. And you're led all with desire. Can't wait to be together. You blow off tests. You skip work. You're making out in the middle of dinner. I, right? I mean, it's, it's all about desire. Then when you begin to establish safety, it's very difficult for desire to remain in the presence of safety. Right. That's, uh, that's that settling in. And what we don't have in our culture, we do have the practice safety. You'll hear your friends being like, hey, do you, does, does he call you back? Does, did she listen to you when you were telling her that you were sad? Like, we have those conversations. We don't have the other conversations, which are, how do I create a world where we're both fully alive and there's mystery and romance and all day text exchanges that lead into firework shows, right? And Right. You see what I'm saying? So I think the best way to start this conversation is we just started a whole new life in a new town with a new job. And I find myself on a trajectory where I don't like who I'm becoming. And my guess is it's not just related to this person at work that you feel like a high schooler around. My guess is you're probably also avoiding X, not helping around the house a little bit, maybe taking one more drink than you normally do or eating one more taco than you normally do. Am I wrong on any of those? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm... Uh, I, I've actually been really trying to work on myself better, just hitting the gym more and, and things like that. Um, and right there's the but, challenge. Can I tell you that? I know, that, I know I'm going yeah. against everything that you're going to see on Instagram for the next five months. I know that. <laughs> When y'all lock into a new town and a new place and a new adventure and a new part of your life, you each going your separate ways to quote unquote work on yourselves can actually pull y'all further apart. You may end up spending more time in the gym, but the only way this thing works long term is if y'all decide we're doubling down on who we're going to be together. Right. And so your whole life is different and y'all probably have not called that out yet. Your old marriage is over. Your old college time is over. Your old high school time is over. You're in a new town, in a new state, in a new job, in a new whatever. And so you all have to acknowledge we're building a new world. And part of our new world is we take care of ourselves. Cool. I need to go to the gym. See See how different that is than I've been working on myself, listening to podcasts, going to the gym, um, do it like journaling more. All of those things are isolating you further and further and further from the person that you're supposed to be building a life with. Okay, yeah. And you may end up doing those same things. I hope I don't sound crazy. You may end up doing those same exact things. But they're going to be in service to your marriage, not in service to you just getting better so you can crush and kill. And I'm, I'm becoming more and more outspoken. I think we've just missed it as a culture. Uh, Brandon, I'm not, I'm not picking on you now. Now I'm just talking to everybody. Somewhere along the way, we begin telling people, you shouldn't be married. You shouldn't get in relationships until you're all you. And if you're struggling with like a mental health disorder or you've got some major personality challenges, yes, you need to go make sure you're well. Or if you're codependent, marrying somebody so that you can be okay is never healthy. But this idea that I've got to go be a Spartan and you've got to be a Spartan so that we can then get married is madness. You got to do that stuff together in service of one another. I'm not going to crush it and kill it in my twenties so I can crush it and kill it in my, so I can have crushed it and kill it in my twenties. I'm going to crush it and kill it in my twenties because me and my wife have a vision of what our family tree is going to look like when the dust settles on our life. 
and I'm willing to put all that work in. I'm willing to do this and X and Y and sacrifice on behalf of my wife and my kids and my community and my country and my wife is I'm, I'm willing to put this aside and this aside. And that goes right in the face of you follow your dreams and you follow your dreams. When somebody tells me these words, it's, it's the new magic words. Um, our marriage just ran its course. Bull crap. I call BS. I call BS. One of you quit or what both of you quit or one of you did something that the other person said, I can no longer be a part of this. But the idea that a relationship just naturally runs out of gas is false. People make life changes. People move. People make decisions about how they're going to invest in themselves and other people and in, more importantly, in the total relationship. So, Brandon, I tell you all that to tell you. I love you. You're not crazy. I don't think you're a bad guy. I don't think you need to walk in your front door and be like, I am. I, I, don't, I, I don't hear that. Okay. I also, you, you, if you listen to the show for five seconds, you know, I'm really anti secrets, right? It may be that when you tell your wife, Hey, I'm even finding myself like having crushes on people at work. Like I, I, I'm worried about, um, I'm worried about my trajectory and I want to create a world where we desire one another. Um, and we practice desire on a regular basis. Um, I want you to know you're not crazy. I've been there. I don't know actually uh, anybody that hasn't been there, male or female, quite honestly. Question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to do what the culture says and follow your feelings? And they're going to lead you right off a cliff. Or are you going to remember, I made a covenant. I said, till death do us part. All my things are your things and all your things are my things. And I'll spend the rest of my life making sure your life is well. And I hope you'll do the same for me. I think you should choose option two, but that's just me. 